everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, I want before I get started. I want before our prayer. I wanted to show this. It's a picture, a cartoon picture, a young lady that I know, Mariah. She made this for me. She does these cartoon type things and she does them with markers. I think she does a great job. But anyway, I want to just throw a pitch out there. Uh, working through the word is on, I'm on YouTube. It's W E R K I N G through the word. If you would pass that along to some of your friends. Okay. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time, Lord. I thank you for the many blessings that you've given us. I pray that you would put your protection. Lord, keep my mind focused. Uh, Lord, uh, and just be with those out in the video audience. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless this lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so our main storyline today is taken from Judges chapter 16, verses 1 through 31. This Judges is in the Old Testament. A few verses from chapter 13 I'm going to read just to help set up the storyline. So back uh, back to that, um, let me read it, and uh, Judges chapter 13. Again the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for forty years. Now there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of the Danites, Danites whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me, uh, and his countenance was the countenance of the angel, like an angel of God. Very awesome. But I did not ask where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. All right, so in these verses, um, going into that, we see that, uh, I don't know about you, but part, you know, that story reminds us of what? About Mary, how the angel appeared to Mary and told her she gave the promise that she would have a son. And, of course, Mary was going to give birth to the Savior of the world, and that she was going to have an off-the-charts, no-comparison baby ever known in the history of mankind, which some people to this day don't believe in the way how she conceived. But in Luke uh, chapter, chapter 1, verse 37, it says it all. For with God, nothing will be impossible. All right, let's get back to our story. We see that Manoah's wife is barren. She has encountered this divine appointment which was great news. We can only imagine how excited she had to be. Um, the angel then proceeded to give her specific instructions as to things she shouldn't do during her pregnancy. It is quite apparent God had called her child from the womb and had plans for their son. Um, I can't think of a better way to, to find out that you're going to have a child but other than an angel tell you. Goodness gracious, that's awesome. That's better than any sonogram, right ladies? All right, she was told um, that her child would be a Nazarite and would what? He would begin to deliver the Israelites out of the uh, hands of the Philistines. Now, later we will see that um, that really had, uh, he also, the Lord would rest upon him and he would have an unusual amount of strength, physical strength. Uh, he apparently, by one of the commentaries, how they said it was they didn't know that he really looked like he was bulked up and all that. Um, but anyway, uh, and maybe that's why, it just, uh, well, I don't know. But anyway, in fact, in chapter 15, it talks about how he struck, um, he struck a thousand Philistines down with one donkey's jawbone. Boy, I'll tell you what, that had to hurt like a sore thumb, wouldn't it? <laughs> Um, what a way to die. <laughs> anyway, notice, um, notice God deemed it necessary to raise up another to help out the uh, Israelites from their enemy, the, uh, the Philistines. They always seemed to be getting into some kind of trouble and needing God's help. To send, he needed to send someone to help and deliver them. And why? Because they forgot their Jehovah God, went down their own path, um, and it seemed like to me there was a pattern with them being good for a little while when they w and then they would go their own way until they suffered enough and then they would turn back to God and ask for him to help them when they desperately needed his help. It was a vicious circle for, for them, for sure. Kind of sounds like us, doesn't it, at times. All right, her son was already given an assignment and purpose here on earth from birth. 
from the womb, just like God has purpose for each and every one of us. Of course, we know what happens. Satan gets in the picture. He's always trying to trip us up, and we just have to decide whether we're going to follow God's plan or not. Uh, it's easy to get in uh, following Satan's plan. It's just easier. <laughs> it's just easy. Uh, but we can sure save a lot of time if what? We would just be obedient. Because I have found out following Christ is definitely, it's an adventure. So it's kind of, it's really a cool thing. Okay, it was set. He was going to be a Nazarite. He, uh, that's what he was going to be. And like I mentioned before, uh, not only did, it, uh, when I read the scripture, not only did the angel give the woman, because uh, they don't give a name for her, the woman uh, t instructions, but for the baby as well. The instructions for a Nazarite were as follows. Don't drink wine or strong drink. Don't eat anything considered unclean. And never, never use a razor on his hair. No haircuts, in other words. Might have looked a little shabby there. But anyway. All right, in chapter 13, verse 7, the angel also stated that his call to be a Nazarite would be from the womb until he died. Now, according to the layman's Bible dictionary, uh, there were times that uh, someone would become a Nazarite, but it was just for a fixed time. But this was not the case. This was uh, a different type situation. I just thought that's a, a little interesting note. It certainly would seem easier to comply with these instructions when given by an angel, wouldn't it? Because um, I might have had a problem if my doctor would have said, don't eat any chocolate and lay off that salt, girl, <laughs> when I was pregnant. I love salt. Luckily, I have low blood pressure. Anyway, the rest of the chapter 13 and all the chapters leading up to where I want to start with today's lessons are really quite interesting. I'm hoping that maybe you guys will take a chance and read, uh, really read through the storyline 13 through 16 for yourself. Uh, you'll get a real feel for Samson, his character, and how he has a lot of drama and shenanigans going on in his life. Um, so when we see, as we get in here, uh, we see that Samson is now in Gaza. When the, Ga the Gazites found out Samson was in their city, they plotted to kill him, but it didn't work. Uh, he wasn't exactly a friend when it came to the dealings with the Philistines. He had a lot of enemies. If you read chapters 14 and 15, you will see... Uh, you'll get a picture of his character more. He's selfish. He's revengeful. He's very headstrong. He's quite uh, explosive. There's my dynamite. Quite explosive and somewhat spoiled by his uh, parents. Uh, maybe they were older. They spoiled him. I don't know. And pretty much got what he wanted. At times, uh, it seemed like he would use the gift of his unusual strength to meet his needs and wants instead of God's at times. In spite of his behavior, I was surprised to find out that God did use him as an Israelite judge for 20 years after a victory over the Philistines. So that kind of surprised me. But anyway, let's go into chapter 16, and I will begin reading at four, verse 4. Afterward, it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Now, um, it seems here... Uh, this is going to be one of his, this is his downfall. He falls in love for a woman named Delilah, a woman who we will find out she can't be trusted and that one that can be paid off. She basically was what, she was bad news for him. And he doesn't even recognize it until it's too late, unfortunately. All right, let me read verse 5. And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, Entice him and find out where his great strength lies, and by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to afflict him, and every one of us will give you 1,100 pieces of silver. Whoa, that's a lot of money. Well, it seems the old gal is um, approached by some very influential men who try to bribe her with some what you would call hush money um, to find out what the secret to his strength was. And how influential were these men? Well, each one of them ruled over a Philistine city. There were five of them. So these men definitely carried some clout in their region or their area. But they apparently got together, came up with this bribery plan to deal with this thorn in their side, Samson. They wanted to take him down. <laughs> the question is, will Delilah's uh, supposed love for Samson... 
um, uh, would it supersede her love supersede or would she take the bat the, the bait I'm sorry they were willing to give her what a lot of money there's a hundred dollar bill anyway okay according to answers.com back then uh, 10 shekels was a decent way uh, decent day's wage just to give you an idea they were going to give her 1100 now there were five men so it comes out to 5500 and that's a lot when you think of a lot of money she was going to be one rich chick in that day um, if, if she decided to do this which we she see that she does it was a generous offered and uh, offer and it showed how much that they wanted to find out Samson's secret to his strength because he was truly an irritation to the Philistines and you think about it 1100 Jesus was only betrayed with 30 pieces of silver hmm all right let me read verses 6 through 9 for you guys so Delilah said to Samson please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound to afflict you what you may be bound that would afflict you and Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, and she bound him with them. Now men were lying in wait, staying with her in her, in her room, and she said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he broke the bowstrings, and a strand of yarn breaks when it touches as when a strand of yarn breaks when it touches fire. So the secret of the strength was not known. All right, so the verses, uh, these verses here. Delilah goes along with the plan. She goes hook, line, and sinker. She does it all. So she starts to turn on. She decides to get in this plan and cozy up with them and began to turn her charms on to Satan. She basically, what we would call in today's time, let me put my coat on here, which is used for whoops I might not be able to get it on okay so there's the coat she now has become what a turncoat uh, she is a turncoat and really a chameleon in disguise all right let's go on Samson supposedly um, so there's no love lost here for Samson it was all about her at this point Samson supposedly shares about his strength but really what he was only doing was he was dangling a carrot out in front of her <laughs> Ooh, I don't think he thought too much about it. His very nature seemed to be one of a jokester and a riddler. It was a good laugh at her expense. Well, you know, when she reported the answer that Samson had given her to the Philistines, they had to be giddy about the information. It seems they wasted no time and brought Delilah the bowstrings themselves. She, in turn, binds them around him with the, bow, with the bowstrings that they had brought, um, now picture the next scene. The men are hiding in the room somewhere, I don't know where, uh, ready to pounce on Samson as their plans are, are getting ready to play out at, uh, in their minds. They've played it all out in their minds how this is going to go down, and now they're seeing it. Delilah yells out, the Philistines are coming upon you, Samson. But their plan was only met with failure. He busted right out of those bowstrings like nothing flat. No sweat, nothing his secret was still safe. Remember, no sweat, secret still safe. Okay, let me read 10 through 12. Then Delilah said to Samson, Look, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now please tell me what, what you may be bound with. So he, he said to her, If they bind me securely with new ropes that have never been used, then I shall become weak and would be like any other man. Therefore Delilah took new ropes, bound him with them, and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And men were lying in wait, staying in the room, but he broke them off his arms like a thread. She pours on the, uh, so, interesting, isn't it? Uh, they're waiting, she pours, and, and, and they're getting, they're getting uh, upset because it's not going to be what they, what they think. They're going to be upset. Uh, she pours on the pity party saying, you're mocking me, and hey, you shouldn't have lied. But she continues to ask, what is the one thing that can hold you? He tells her that those new ropes, just use new ropes, and that'll do it. That uh, that you've never used to, uh, before, it'll do the trick. So she ties them up again. She says once more, the Philistines are coming, Samson. And what happens, but it seemed that very, it was way too easy, easy peasy. That was easy. Just like how you take a, um, a rope. Uh, like you take a piece of thread and you break it it was easy for him this was nothing 
I don't know about you, but I'm wondering, is Samson naive? Is he seeing through all this? It does, it, doesn't he think it's a tad odd that she's asking me this again? Could it be he isn't worried one iota because he has so much strength that any attempt to grab him would be nothing for him to break? Besides, God's on his side. He's, he's a Nazarite. I don't, I don't know. Just wondering. That's what my thoughts are thinking. Okay, so let's go to 13 through 15. Delilah said to Samson, until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me what you, what you may be bound with. And he said to her, if you weave the seven locks of my head into the web of the loom. So she wove it tightly with the, bat, the batten on the, of the loom and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled out the batten and the web from the loom. Then she said to him, how can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and you have not told me where your great strength lies. Oh, boy. Okay, once more the drama starts back up with Delilah about the lying and the mocking. I wonder if, she, if he's starting to think, hey, you know what? I'm, <laughs> I'm not henpecked. <laughs> he's probably thinking that, but big money is at stake for her because it certainly wasn't love that's for sure she's in it to win it and it's just a game it seems for her uh, for him uh, it's just a game he he likes riddles he like he's a jokester then she yells again the, uh, you know the bible said she wove the hair in really tightly i don't have a loom so I, as a visual but uh, so he wakes up yanks the hair out of the loom seems that there was nothing uh for him that could break and you know he had to have strong uh, neck muscles to grab his head out of a loom that's been woven in because that could really hurt you know but you know the thing is he never really has connected the dots here he's got to he's got to wonder if something's up with all these attempts of betrayal here well he doesn't know it's a betrayal but she she does i just he doesn't get it uh, I just believe Samson loved games, and this is one at the expense of the one he supposedly loved, Delilah. Now she gets really dramatic and pulls out and plays what? She plays... She plays the love card. Now she's going to try to appeal to his emotions. She goes on about it again. Hey, once is, you know... Basically, once isn't bad enough, but now three times, what? You know, going on and on. Enough is enough. She'd had it. She was mad as what? She was mad as a hornet. She certainly is putting on a good show, that's for sure. She's probably thinking about all that money that she's gonna getting ready to come into. Funny how each of them were playing each other and really seemed like the couple's relationship was really a toxic-type relationship to me. Um... All right, 16 through 18, I want to read. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so his soul was vexed to death that he told her all his heart and said to her, No razor shall ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all of his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all about his heart. So the, the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money at her hand. So in 16 here, 16 through 16, 19, oh, wait a minute, let me go up here. I got a little lost here. The woman was getting to the point where she was driving him crazy because day after day she was hounding him about where is this pressure coming from. He spills his gut finally and he tells her everything about being a Nazarite. Now Delilah has the truth and she knows it in her heart that he, it, he said it from his heart and goes to tell the Lord of the Philistines. Um, talking about... Talk about throwing someone under the bus. Poor Samson. He didn't stand a chance, did he? I'm not going to say poor Samson. He knew he was messing there. Um, I'm sure by now they're thinking, you know, these these men that she's going to, these leaders, you know, they're thinking, well, is he going to trick, trick us again? You know, is this worth it? You know, because all he's been doing is putting us on a bunch of bunny trails. And, and he shouldn't be doing that. Uh, if he was honest to his wife, to Delilah. But they do come, and they do come with the money. Let me read verse 19. Then she lulled him to sleep on her knees, and she called for a man 
and had him shave off his seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. Whoa. Talk about an agenda. She had one. Her hard work and persistence had paid off. No love loss, like I said. Money was speaking louder, uh, louder to her than love. She tricks him. Let me get my scissors here. Now, I only got two... I only got two braids here, it talks about. But she ends up having this guy come and cuts off the seven locks of his hair. And he's been lulled to sleep, basically. She tricks him into sleeping and has this man come and do this. Wonder why she torments it, because it does say that in the verse. Uh, all this game playing and look. <laughs> his strength has left him. But he doesn't know it yet. He's in for a great awakening. No pun intended. Remember, he was asleep. So, no, uh, none of this. She had lulled him to sleep on her knees, called for the man, and had him shave off the seven locks. And then, like I said, she began to torment him, which is weird. Okay, let's go into t verse 20. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he woke and said, I will go out before you as other times and shake free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. Ooh, that's a, that's a, a rude awakening. Um, I, you know, he just thought that he could shake himself free like in all the past times. You know, I can do this. But now he's not going to be able to. And how scary that's going to feel to him. The Lord had departed from him. And really what he had done, the Lord had, see my feathers, had clipped his wings. Oh boy, oh boy. All right, let's go into verses 21 through 22. Then the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. However, the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaven. So these verses here, the 21, um, uh, 21 th unfortunately, as we see, is, is not going well for him at all from this point on. Um, truly, the game was closed now. The game he'd been playing up to this point. They gouged his eyes out. He was helpless. His strength was drained. See my drain? His, that was drained. He's been put into fetters, that would be hands or feet or whatever. I don't know if you can see that. And um, they put him to work grinding. Um, inquiring minds want to know right now, where is Delilah after all this went down? Seems to be nowhere in sight. Because she, she, she sure wasn't throwing any lifesavers or anything to him, was she? She was lost. She got her money and run, basically. All right. So, the Philistines thought they had taken him down for the count and would be in control of him for the rest of his life. But guess what? They really didn't. I don't know if you can see my noodles here. They didn't use their noodle, their noodles, because the hair started to grow back. Goodness gracious. Anyway, but... That being said, let me read verses 23 through 24. Now the Lord of the Philistines gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, Dagon, their God, and to rejoice. And they said, Our God has delivered into our hands Samson, our enemy. When the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God has delivered him into our hands our enemy, the destroyer of our land, and the one who multiplied our death. So they were so happy and thankful to this God of theirs, Dagon, who um, for helping them take down this enemy, Samson. They offered their sacrifices to this false god, rejoicing and praising him. For Samson had been this great thorn in their side. This was quite a feat for them to take him down. Um, a man of such great strength that would be like pulling a rabbit out of a habit out of a habit out of a hat you know um all right let me read verse 25 and it said so it happened when their hearts were merry that they said call for samson that he may perform for us so they called for samson from the prison and he performed for them and they stationed him between the pillars 
All right, verse 25 here. Um, as they're celebrating in, their temp, uh, in the temple, they have Samson called out from his prison to make sport of him, to taunt him and his God. Basically, that's what they're doing. Uh, have him perform whatever that was. I don't know, you know, what that was. Mainly, they wanted to look at their prize. They had finally what? They had won the trophy that they had went after, finally. For they did have a bone to pick with Samson because he had killed many of their people, as it states. Imagine how Samson felt. He once, he really was once, he basically had the world by the tail at one, a, a long period of time. Oh, how things have changed. Um, the, because of his foolishness. When he was brought in, it just so happens where he was stationed in the temple was between the pillars of the temple where they were celebrating. This un ended up being very strategic, uh, a strategic placement. Uh, for the Bible points that out, and it definitely means something's very important. Right, let me read verse 26. It says, Then Samson said to the lad who held him by the hand, Let me feel the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. Ooh. Samson was such, he was in such um, a pickle by now. He really was. He was, he, he was in a pickle. And how was he going to get out of this? Or would he get out of it? We'll see. They had a mere boy taking care of him. That's all that was needed to guard him. Boy. Samson asked the lad to let him feel uh, where the support pillars of the temple were so he could lean against it. Um, the innocent lad probably didn't think anything of this request. And he wouldn't, you know. Uh, th there's all this commotion of it's like a big party going on you could be very distracted and it wasn't like he had to really guard him all right verse 27 now the temple was full of men and women all the, all the lords of the philistines were there about three thousand men and women on the roof watching while samson performed how humiliating humiliating that would be um samson had uh, something in mind when he was telling that lad why he wanted to be by the pillars he had a plan and um those it just so happens the temple was filled to the brim three thousand uh i mean this was something to outsmart this strong man who is now blind and is being ta taunted and made fun of and making him perform for every everyone everyone wanted to get in the action of this and laugh at him all right, verse 28, then Sam, and 28 through 31. Then Samson called, um, oops, my page is stuck. Called the, so Samson called the Lord, saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once, O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my, for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple, and he braced himself against them, one on his right and one on his left. Then Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might. And the temple fell on the lords and all the people who were there. So the dead that he killed and the, at his death were more than he had killed in his life. And his brothers and all his father's household came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal in the tomb of his father Manoah. He had judged Israel 20, 20 years. Here is where we finally see the shift in Samson's, um, in his spirit. And maybe he had a shift when they gouged his eyes out. You know, there's something to be said about, there's a verse that talks about taking the beam out of your own eye, the speck out of your own eye. See the little speck there? He got some perspective is what he got. And, uh, and maybe that's when finally, well, he was kind of out of, he couldn't win right now. Uh, a change was made, and he calls out, and he has an attitude adjustment. No more jokes, no more attitude. He had been trapped by his own words when he had told Delilah his source of strength. He now just wanted God to help him. Remember, he, was, he wanted him to remember him and to strengthen him for one last time. He knew what he was doing when he did this. Uh, he knew he was going to die as well. Um, remember him and, and to strengthen him is what he asked for. And that he could get justice for them gouging and losing his two eyes. This would also be one last thing that he could do for his God. Uh, Samson braced himself against the pillars and says to his God, let me die with them all. And with one big boost uh, of strength, he pushed and brought the pillars and the temple down, killing all. They didn't know what hit them. 
in their pride, their arrogance, their partying, and their celebrating. Now they were all dead. In fact, in verse 30, it says that he killed more that day in the temple than when he was living. Because he had his own agenda, remember? His brothers and his fa uh, father, uh, father's household came and they took him and buried him in the tomb of his father. I've heard this story many a time. But this time when I was studying it afterwards, God gave me a totally different kind of takeaway from it. I feel that he gave me... Um, it was one, this lesson gave me a clear picture of how the devil works. He plays uh, and, get, uh, and he pits us against one another at times. He plants uh, little seeds in our mind, waiting for us to take hold of it and to run with it. Spin, spin it like a top in our minds. He lies to us about ourselves, others, lies about what others may think of us, lies that things won't work out never work out, never get any better. He uses us as what? He uses us as puppets and pawns in his games. With each and every one, just like he did for Delilah and Samson. Uh, he, he played him like a top. So, um, let me go on here. Um, just like the storyline today, they both had their own agendas, playing their own games, and they pitted each other against each other. It's, it, it's obvious they were totally into each of their own agendas, not really thinking of others. Hers was all about the money, and for him it was joking, playing, selfishness, his own agenda. And somewhere in the midst of it, prideful enough, he thought, to use what was given to him uh, as he wanted with it instead of using the strength for totally for God's purposes. The very reason it had been given to him in the first place. Um, and it was to help deliver the Israelites from the Philistines. He ignored it, the initial reason, and it was all forgotten because he was living for himself. And so it is with us right here, right now. The devil, while waiting in the wings, is very patient with each and every one of us. Um, he has a plan. He's working on it. And if we'll take the bait, you know, he, that, he'll take that first chance to pounce on us with the final blow to divide, conquer, and destroy our lives. Often enough, we come in with our own agendas when God is saying, jump on board with me, my agenda, my plan for your life. For if you do, you will be blessed. God is out for our happiness and not everything in life there, because sin's in the world and sin comes in. Yes, as a believer, you and I will still have those heartbreaks, those trials and tribulations and frustrations, but our God is waiting in the wings too to walk beside us each and every day. Uh, help us, strengthen us, guide us. God has wonderful lessons that will be learned from going through each one of these trials and tests. Why not jump on board with Him and see what He can do with you for your life? If life hasn't been working for you, you have nothing to lose, guys. Let us choose God's plan for our lives and rest in his love, guidance, and tender love and care. In closing, let me ask you, has the devil been using and playing you lately, getting you to believe lies and loading it with all kinds of drama and swirl? You know, he knows how to press that one button, the same button. And that's a red one, guys. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh... He, play, he places it, we get played into his hands without even knowing it. What are you going to do about it? Continue in the mess or make a 911 call to the Lord for him to help you. You guys decide. Who knows? Samson could have done so much more and achieved so much if he had just been sold out to his God. What more can you achieve if you and I stop? If we don't play games and we jump ship over to the Lord's side. There are great adventures awaiting us for if we follow him and his purpose for our lives and we don't put him, what, on the back burner anymore. Really. Cut some of that stuff out. I, I cut things, different things through here. Cut the hair, cut the feathers, you know, the wings. Cut that stuff out of your life and give your life to him. I'd like to close and, and just thank you for watching um, today. Um, those that don't know Jesus as their Savior, ask Him into your heart, repent, forgive, ask for forgiveness of sins, believe He died, He rose again, and He's coming back to get us to live in eternity. You can do that. It's simple. Just ask Him to come into your heart and those things. Uh, if you'll bow your heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this lesson, Lord. 
it's, it's a, a good lesson of how we get sidetracked, Lord, and, and we play games with you, God. Lord, let us get in, in, in the, your path. Lead and guide and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching, guys.